Before we get started with the video, I want to give a brief shout out to Samurai Legends. Samurai Legends is a historical fantasy book series set mainly during the Sengoku Jidai. It is inspired heavily by Japanese folklore and mythology, but uses these elements to intertwine with real history in fascinating ways, as gods are sealed away within weapons of war that are then wielded by many of the real historical samurai figures we know from Japanese history. This is a really interesting concept to me, and having seen the project evolve over the years, I really think it deserves some attention for all the hard work and effort that has gone into it. If you want to check out Samurai Legends, I will leave some links down below to not only where you can find some of the books on Amazon, but also the official Facebook page where chapters are posted frequently. Come see it for yourself, and also take a look at some of the previews for the manga adaption that is on the way as well. But with that said, let's get on to the video. So far, in these clan history videos that I have been putting out, we have covered many of the most famous and influential samurai clans of all time. Great names that are remembered for their prominent positions and role they played throughout Japanese history, from the islands of Honshu to Kyushu. Yet in this video, we will finally be arriving on the island of Shikoku, a first for this series, as today we are going to be at last discussing the interesting history of the Chosokabe which was selected by my supporters on Patreon. The Chosokabe are one of the most unique families of Old Japan, emerging during the violent and chaotic age of the Sengoku Jidai to overthrow their masters and eventually unify all of Shikoku themselves. However, their glory would be short-lived, as soon enough a reckoning would come for them. In this video we seek to cover it all, from their beginning to their rise, to their tragic fall from grace. The origins of the Chosokabe family are somewhat obscure, as the birth and death dates of the earliest family leaders do not appear to be entirely known. Rather, the Chosokabe name as we know it seems to have first been used by a figure named Chosokabe Yoshitoshi who originally came from the Hata family of Shinano province, but would later be moved to Tosa on the island of Shikoku. Yoshitoshi is believed to have lived from the end of the Heian period into the early years of the Kamakura period. He and the generations that would follow him claim ancestry to none other than Qing Shi Huang, founder of the Qing dynasty and the first ruler of a unified China. If this is really true, then the Chosokabe would certainly have one of the most impressive lineages in all of samurai history. The family's kamon, or family crest, would come to be the Nanatsu Katabami, the seven wood sorrels, or seven leaf of wood sorrel. It depicts the fertile wood sorrel plant, which is often seen to be a symbol of prosperity for offspring. Much of the early years of the Chosokabe family's existence seem to be fairly uneventful, being a minor name located in Tosa, they were somewhat removed from the major events and conflicts that gripped Japan. Yet it was during the Nanboku Cho period that it appears Tosa came to fall largely under the influence of the rising Hosokawa clan, who maintained a grip on it until decades later, after the Onin War, when they began to steadily decline. This led to the rise of three major names across the province, with obviously the Chosokabe being one of them, as they had previously been Jito, deputy administrators of the province, but also they were joined by the prominent Ichijo and Motoyama. Entering into the years of Japan's Warring States period, the Sengoku Jidai is really where the true story of the Chosokabe is found, as all of their most famous exploits are seen here during their ambitious rise and tragic fall. By the early years of the 16th century, the Chosokabe were at war with their bitter rivals, the Motoyama who by 1508 had captured the Chosokabe power base of Oko and killed Lord Chosokabe Kanetsugu. His son, Chosokabe Kunichika, is said to have sought the aid of the Ichijo of Western Tosa, who within a decade would help the Chosokabe retake Oko. By this point, the Chosokabe are largely seen to have become vassals of the Ichijo and would continue to strengthen their position in Tosa. Throughout the remainder of Kunichika's life, he would time and time again clash with the Motoyama until his death finally in 1560, where he was then succeeded by his famous son, Chosokabe Motochika. 
Throughout his youth, there had been concerns over Motochika's apparent gentle nature. Yet these fears all but went away when Motochika proved himself in battle against the Motoyama in that very same year. By the end of Kunichika's life, he had already begun drawing away from the Ichijo, who were becoming increasingly unpopular. Motochika would continue this trend by steadily increasing the power of the Chosokabe. Motochika leaned heavily into the usage of the distinct feature of Tosa, the Ichiryu Kusoku, part-time farmer samurai who could easily be called upon during moments of need. They were not professional soldiers and their armor and weapons reflected this, but they were extremely useful when called upon in mass. Now, Tosa was a large province and a land of violence between many of the families that called it home. It was the perfect atmosphere for the rise of the ambitious Chosokabe. By 1560, their victories over the Motoyama had essentially eliminated them, and soon enough, Motochika was on the move against another significant name in the province, the Aki. In 1569, with 7,000 men at his back, Motochika marched east, defeating the Aki in battle and seizing their power base. This left only one obstacle for the Chosokabe's full domination of Tosa. They now had to overcome their own overlords, the Ichijo. By the early 1570s, the Ichijo were under the lordship of Ichijo Kanesara, a man who was certainly not well regarded and had caused the defection of a number of his own retainers already. With his weakness exposed and hemorrhaging his loyal supporters, in 1573 Motochika betrayed the Ichijo and attacked, quickly seizing the Ichijo capital Nakamura and forcing Kanesara to flee to Bongo, where he sought refuge with the Otomo. Having driven the Ichijo from the province, Motochika had become a Sengoku Daimyo and lord over all of Tosa. Yet the Ichijo were not out of the fight entirely, and shortly thereafter, in 1575, with some support from the Otomo and former retainers, they would journey back to Tosa to try to retake the province. However, Motochika would meet them at the Battle of Shimantogawa, where his overwhelming numbers would soundly defeat the Ichijo once and for all. Cementing his rule over all of Tosa was a momentous moment for Motochika and the Chosokabe. Yet Tosa itself, despite being the largest province on the island, was somewhat limiting. And if Motochika truly wanted to establish himself as a proper regional power, he would need to expand further. Thus his ambition of taking the rest of Shikoku was born. His initial campaign was to march up into Iyo province to subjugate the Kono, who had previously been close with the Mori. Yet by 1579, the Mori were deep into a war against the mighty Oda clan and would not be able to save the Kono from a Chosokabe invasion. To this end, Motochika and Oda Nobunaga are believed to have begun some discourse around this time, growing closer as potential allies. Yet in actuality, Nobunaga appears to have cared little for the Chosokabe, seeing them just to be a means to an end, an insignificant power he would in time topple. Motochika's war against the Kono was initially met with some difficulty, as his first assault was driven off. One year later, however, he doubled down on his efforts and led a much larger force that overran the province and caused the Kono to flee to Kyushu. From there, Motochika turned his attention to Awa and Sanuki provinces, which had come under the rule of the Sogo clan. With his newly established power, Motochika ramped up attacks against the Sogo into the early 1580s. And finally, by 1583, with the Sogo unable to hold off the unrelenting Chosokabe invasion, Motochika was at last able to claim ownership over all of Shikoku. With the entirety of the island under his control, the Chosokabe had firmly become a regional power. Yet the situation outside of Shikoku was a bit more uncertain. The relations that Motochika had been building up with the Oda had come to a disastrous halt when Nobunaga was betrayed and killed a year earlier in 1582. Now, it appeared as if one of Nobunaga's most prominent generals, Hashiba Hideyoshi, was on the precipice of taking over in the aftermath. In that same year of 1583, Hideyoshi would come to win at the massive battle of Shizugatake against Shibata Katsuie, furthering his influence over the central regime. And finally, by 1584, he would come to face down Tokugawa Ieyasu at the Battle of Komaki Nagakute. It appears as if Motochika either was not enthusiastic of Hideyoshi or perhaps just more supportive of Ieyasu, 
because Motochika is believed to have sided with the Tokugawa during this conflict. Ultimately, this would end up being a major mistake, as the Komaki-Nagakute conflict would eventually end in a truce between the Hashiba and Tokugawa, and the fact that Motochika sided with the Tokugawa meant that he had just given Hideyoshi all the justification he needed to launch a full-scale invasion of Shikoku. Hostilities between the two quickly ramped up, and within a year the first invasion force set out. It was an army led by Sengoku Hidehiza, who had taken Awaji Island for the Oda clan back in 1581. And although he had found previous success, this first attack would be soundly halted when he was met with the Chosokabe army in Awa province and forced to withdraw. Following this, by 1585, the full invasion was underway, as Hashiba forces landed in three major spots across the shores of Shikoku. Spread thin, Motochika established himself at a central point on the island where he intended to lead his great defense. However, things were almost done as quickly as they started. Not only were the Chosokabe heavily outnumbered, but they were also heavily outmatched. The Ichiryo Gusoku, which had been so instrumental to Motochika's rise, were now his detriment. They were not anywhere the equal of the efficient and professional soldiers from Honshu. It appears as if military technology and preparedness had greatly fallen behind in Shikoku, as there have been records of their equipment being in very poor condition and even outdated. With Chosokabe forces in full retreat and being closed in upon, Motochika had no other option than to sue for peace. Luckily, Hideyoshi saw no need to eradicate Motochika and his family. Instead, he was to show mercy and generosity. In exchange for his life, Motochika would be stripped of all of his newly acquired territories other than Tosa, and he would thereafter be effectively made into one of Hideyoshi's vassals. It was an offer Motochika could not refuse. Thus, only two short years after unifying Shikoku under his family, he had just as quickly lost it. In the years to come, he would be called upon to aid in more of Hideyoshi's campaigns. The first would be just a year later, when Hideyoshi responded to Otomo calls for aid in Kyushu, as the Shimazu clan had been pushing hard northward to seize the majority of the island. Chosokabe Motochika, along with his son and heir Nobuchika, and ironically, Sengoku Hidehiza, were to be the first to make landfall in Kyushu. Their orders were largely to entrench themselves and wait for the rest of the main Hashiba force to arrive. Unfortunately, however, Sengoku Hidehiza disobeyed this order and set off to engage the Shimazu. This would result in a disastrous defeat at the Battle of Hitsugigawa that sadly also caused the death of Motochika's son Nobuchika. The death of his son deeply affected him, and Hideyoshi, even feeling sorry for Motochika's loss, is said to have offered Osumi province in Kyushu to him as compensation for his son's death and Hidehiza's foolishness. Yet, Motochika ultimately declined. Having to now make the difficult decision of selecting a new heir to the clan, Motochika would settle on his fourth son, Chosokabe Morichika, a decision that aggravated his other sons and caused rifts to form within the clan. Later, during the siege of Odawara in 1590, Motochika participated by leading a naval contingent to support Hashiba, now Toyotomi, Hideyoshi in his war against the Hojo. This would be the final push towards Hideyoshi's unification of Japan, and after which he would begin to set his sights abroad to an invasion of the mainland. By 1592, the invasion of Korea, the Imjin War, would begin to which, once again, Motochika would be called upon to serve. Motochika would lead 3,000 troops as part of the 5th Division during the initial stages of the war, and later, during the second invasion, would once again lead 3,000 as part of the Army of the Right. The Imjin War would of course not end well for the Japanese, as their poor performance at sea caused their faltering on land. And by 1598, with the death of Hideyoshi, the Japanese were pulling out. By this point, Motochika was moving into old age. After a life of struggle, his time was finally coming to an end. He had succeeded in many regards, having conquered Tosa and established stability for his family, as well as the formation of a 100 article code he would write for the Chosokabe. Yet his defeat to Hideyoshi that caused the collapse of his status as a regional power and lord over all of Shikoku would be a sore memory 
especially also given the later death of his son while in service to the Hashiba. It appears as though he too found struggles at home, not only for the tension caused by his selection of a new heir, but also as he had continually relocated his power base, ever in search of a proper castle town with a strong economy. By 1599, at around the age of 60, he would die, passing on full control of the clan to his son Morichika. Soon enough, tension was boiling between Tokugawa Ieyasu and Ishida Mitsunari over what the future of Japan would be following the death of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Initially, Morichika is believed to have intended to side with Ieyasu, yet he would be blocked by Mitsunari's western army and made to join them instead. At the actual Battle of Sekigahara in the year 1600, Chosokabe forces would largely sit out of the conflict as their Mori allies they were positioned near, under the leadership of Kikawa Hiroie, betrayed the western army and refused to move. Thus, following the western army defeat, Morichika would then retreat back to Tosa, where he tried to no avail to apologize to Ieyasu for siding against him. In the end, the Chosokabe would be stripped of their home province. With nothing left to his name, Morichika moved to Kyoto, where he is believed to have changed his identity and became a school teacher for some time. This was all until finally, in the build-up to the Siege of Osaka 14 years later, when the new Tokugawa shogunate was threatening to march on the Toyotomi air. It was here Morichika returned to service, in defense of the Toyotomi. He would fight valiantly until the final battle of Tenoji in 1615 after which, with all hope fading, he and his sons would attempt to flee, only to be caught and executed. This was effectively the end of the Chosokabe name as we know it. The Chosokabe are a tragic clan, having achieved so much only to steadily lose it all. Still, their presence in Shikoku throughout the Sengoku Jidai has echoed throughout history. As surprisingly enough, today they are often considered one of the most famous names of the Sengoku period. But if one thing is for certain, they are indeed the most iconic clan to ever rise from Shikoku. If you would like a say in which clan I cover next, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon, where you can recommend future clans for me to cover, as well as vote in polls to determine them. And with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.